I'm your host Jason Park and behind me I have a 1993 Mazda MX-6. This JDM sports car is one of the most undervalued, underrated JDM cars of the 90s. Stick around because it's tuner time. Lion Godzilla, let's go. Eco! She get in my ride for a limited time, then look in my eyes, say don't go. Bugatti, Bugatti, Bugatti. All of my shooters got two bodies, and they on the hunt for a new body. But I never pay for the pool naughty. Right up the fuck you gonna do body. Smoke I promise you. Man, who the hell we going to rock? Mickey Mouse? <laughs> So today we're gonna do things a little differently. The Honda Del Sol that we use for the rolly shots is in the shop right now. And my brother's unavailable to shoot. So we are gonna go straight into the driving experience of the Mazda MX-6. Let's give it a nice little startup and let's get started. Turn the wheel and the wheel got a little locked, so. Whew. All right, so. The 90s Mazda MX-6 is basically in the same category of your Acura Integras, your Honda Civics. This car has a KLDE 2.5 liter V6. It's not the fastest thing on the road, but what it is, is a car that delivers power smoothly, right? Those 160 horsepower, gets to where it needs to get to the wheels like when you think of a, a jdm sports car from the 90s this has everything that you would want right you have your 90s styling right this is the little brother to the rx7 and you can see that there's a lot of styling cues that the rx7 has that the mx6 has now the car is very light it's very nimble it's very fun the only thing that separates this car from, let's say, a 240SX, right, is the fact that it's front wheel drive and it's not rear wheel drive. If this car would have been a front wheel drive car, or I'm sorry, a rear wheel drive car, the value on this car would be astronomical. It would be right up there with the FDR X7. Uh, maybe not as much because, you know, they used it in Fast and the Furious, but this car is such an underrated, undervalued sports car, and it doesn't quite get enough love. And honestly, I don't understand it. I personally have owned three of these. This is my fourth one. All of them have been manuals. This one in particular is an automatic. Gets close to about 30 miles per gallon, if you look uh, online, it will say anywhere from, you know, 23 to 26 miles per gallon. But I have personally averaged about 30 miles per gallon, not in this particular car, but in the manuals in the past. And I will say on those vehicles, I had a carbon fiber hood, you know, so that little weight reduction might have helped a little bit. That right there is old tint. This car that we're in has everything original original mx6 floor mats original seats now in the ls 
I don't know if it's the M edition, but in the LS model, they come with leather seats. These are the cloth seats. This car is so light, so nimble, so fun, and just so easy to drive that it's really hard to understand why any first time driver, any young driver, they, they really only go after the Acura Integras, the Toyota Celicas, the Honda Civics. When you have a car right here that can check every single one of those boxes, right? The Miata has been in production for over 20 years, right? Millions of cars sold. What is it? Small, rear wheel drive, light, fun to drive. This car, the only knock that you can have on this car, because you can find these cheap. You can find these online for cheap because nobody knows about them. Nobody thinks, oh, let me go get an MX-6. But there's some examples online of these cars being super clean and really all you need is a nice lip kit, some coilovers, nice wheels, fresh paint, and a tint job. Car looks absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. So. The one thing I'll say about this particular car is get the V6 over the four cylinder. The V6 has a lot more punch. It doesn't really matter if you get manual or automatic. At the end of the day, it's a light, nimble, easy to drive cruiser. Now I bought this car because I got a really good deal on it. And a part of me wants to really keep the car, right? Um, but I'm probably gonna sell it because I originally bought it for my daughter. She doesn't want it. She's gonna move. So she's probably gonna get something else. But when I came and I looked at this car, the deal was so good. The mileage was so low. The interior, everything about this car um, was in such good condition that all it really needed was a nice clean, right? So I, I, I did a deep clean, carpets, chairs, all that good stuff. And now the car, is it just drives so smooth i don't know if you can find a better 90s jdm car for the price because truthfully truthfully when you think of this type of car right and you think of who the audience is who's the buyer it doesn't quite get better than a Mazda MX-6. As far as the styling, the simplicity, the fact that you can get a 2.5 liter V6 motor that's silky smooth. Uh, you don't have to wait like a Civic for VTEC to kick in to feel that power. The power delivery is just linear, it just goes, right? Um, the styling, not everyone has it. So the MX-6 in essence is extremely rare. If you go to car meets or you just wanna stand out and, and do something on your own, the MX-6 literally checks every single box. The car is really reliable. Like I said, I've owned three of these and I keep buying them because I like them so much. And I haven't, you know, been in an MX-6 in, you know, 10, 15 years. But originally, my friend had an MX-6 and he did a KLZ e-swap on it. Full body kit, K-Sport coilovers. And then I bought the car off him, loved the thing. Uh, and then I had a couple of stock ones. So being in the mx6 and just feeling the nostalgia looking at the design cues and looking at the overall body in the way that it really has that nice 90s jdm curvature throughout the entire body of it it's one of those things where to me it's literally the most underrated undervalued 90s jdm all right guys Let's get a little POV action. From here on out, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna roll the windows up even though it is 90 degrees out. And you're gonna get that experience of a Mazda MX-6.